A fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty hi silver. The Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeat to the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Hi! The town of Oak Flats saw an unusual situation when young Dr. Farnsworth went on trial for murder. The doc was young but highly respected. He was mild-mannered and sympathetic and not at all the type one would look on as a murderer. Yet Doc went on trial and his brother Jim went with him. The two were charged with killing Sam Harper and there was evidence enough to bring in a verdict of guilty. Guilty, aye, aye. Doc's given to saving life, not taking it. Uh, <clears throat> the evidence was there for all to see. What do we do for a doctor in Oak Flats? Yeah. I sure hate to see Doc Farnsworth jail. Clay Beeler's testimony that did the trick. I won't believe those two are guilty. They're guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Opinion was divided, but that didn't matter. The jury had rendered a verdict and the two young men were sentenced. Then a couple of nights later, a sharp cry split the silence. The doctor and his brother broke out of a small old flat jail, found horses, and made a successful escape. This way, Bart. Right. Get up there. Get up. Get up there. The sheriff's men searched all the next day without finding the men who had escaped. That evening found everyone talking about the jailbreak. Some were glad that the doc and his brother had gotten away. Others, like Jay Kendall, the banker, were highly indignant. Kendall had spent the evening in the cafe voicing his opinion of the sheriff's failure. He was still angry when he walked to his home. He approached the house and started up the porch stairs. Kendall. Huh? Uh, where are you? Who are you? Waiting for you. Oh, hiding in the shadows, hmm? Eh? Call it that. Joe Mash. Hold it. Keep your hands where I can see them. Is this a hold-up? I have no money with me. I'm after information, Kendall, not money. But I tell the you... The truth didn't come out at the trial of Dr. Farnsworth and his brother. What do you mean? 
Those men were convicted because of one man's testimony. An eyewitness? What more do you want? Eyewitness, Kendall. Well, he heard the shots at Sam Harper's house. He rode up there just in time to see Doc and Jim riding away fast. Then he went inside and saw Harper dead and still warm. Just a minute, Kendall. I have an Indian friend who cut sign near Harper's home. Well? He saw the tracks made by Clay Beeler's horse. Those tracks were made several hours after Sam Harper died. That fact contradicts the story Beeler told in court, doesn't it? Well... Beeler said he was at the house as the Farnsworth brothers rode away. He said he was there within a couple of minutes after the murder. Now, you see here, mister, I'm I thought not going... I saw Beeler's tracks at sunrise. There had been a slight rainfall and the tracks were quite clear. If he'd been there at midnight, as he said, his tracks would not have shown... Clay Beeler went on the witness stand and swore to a direct lie. That's preposterous. It's none of my affair, but where were you at the trial? If you know so much, why didn't you appear as a witness? The evidence was gone as soon as the sun dried up the rain. We know the truth, but we can't prove it. Well, why do you stop me like this? What do you expect me to do about it? Clay Beeler worked in your bank for a long time, didn't he, Kendall? What of it? Just recently, he bought a small farm. And a few days ago, he paid off the mortgage on that farm. I don't see what that has to do with me. Just this, Kendall. You hated Sam Harper. You wanted him dead. So that's it. Now I understand. A masked man in league with the Farnsworth brothers. And you think you can get them a new trial by making people think I killed Sam Harper? Did you? Of course not. And let me tell you, if you try to cast any implications on me, I'll Did, show you... Uh... Did you pay Clay Beeler to lie on the witness stand? No. I wonder if you're telling the truth. I don't give a hang what you wonder. The Farnsworth brothers think you framed them. Ah, who cares what a couple of convicted killers think? I care what Dr. Farnsworth thinks, Kendall. I care a lot. You, a masked outlaw and a friend of killers. I'm not an outlaw, and I've never spoken to the Farnsworth brothers. But I'll tell you why I think they're innocent. Why? Because I overheard a conversation when they passed within a few yards of my camp. Indeed. They didn't know anyone was around. They had no reason to guard their talk. Yet they spoke of their innocence. Very interesting. And, Kendall, they spoke of you. You know where they went? You probably know where they're hiding. If I do, I'll keep the secret. The sheriff shall hear about you. I'll tell him this very night. That's up to you. Wait! Who are you? Oh, we meet again, Kendall. I'll have the law on you. You wait and see. One silver. A few minutes later, the Lone Ranger reigned up in a small, well-concealed camp where Tonto was waiting. Oh, silver, hold on. Oh. Kendall, Kimasabi. Yes, I did, Tonto. And he's just the sort of man I thought he was. Well, what did you learn in town? Oh, plenty talk about scape fellers. Oh? Uh, some people glad them get way. Others, plenty mad. Oh, what about Kendall? Oh, him mad. Him plenty mad. Yes, I imagine so. You think him real killer? If he is. He'll get away with it. Unless we can do something. Uh, and what we do? We'll call on the chief witness against the Farnsworths. A fellow named Beeler. Yes, Tonto. Clay Beeler. The man who lied in court. <laughs> Clay Beeler lived on the small ranch he'd recently purchased. It was late at night when he was roused from a sound sleep by his wife. Clay, wake up. Wake up, Clay. Oh, go away. Go away. Please, Clay, please. Hmm? Oh, what's the matter, huh? It's Billy. Do get wide awake, Clay. Man, the lights are all going. Jenny, what's wrong? I'm trying to tell you. It's Billy. There's something the matter with him. Billy? Great day. What's wrong with you? I don't know, but he's terrible sick. Here, throw this blanket around you so you don't take cold. Uh, where is he? In his own room, of course. You can leave that lamp there. I've lighted the lamp in his room. Right. I heard him crying real soft. I went in to look at him. He's hot and feverish. What's the matter there, son? Hmm? Feel his head. Gosh, she is feverish. Oh, Clay, I'm scared. You remember how many people died of the fever a short time ago? Did you try to give him some water? He won't touch it. He just lies there whimpering like that. 
And such a funny little whimper. Jenny, I, I'm afraid he needs a doctor. Right into town, Clay, and hurry. Get Dr. Farns. Oh. Jenny, there ain't no doctor. Clay, what'll we do? Gosh, I, I don't know. Clay. Hey, what the... His mask. May I look at your baby? Who are you, and why do you wear that mask? Never mind the mask. Better think about this child. Do you know anything about treating the fever? I've seen a lot of illness. Hot. Feverish. Beeler, the little fellow needs a doctor. Yes, but there is no doctor. Only doctor we had was Dr. Farnsworth. And no one knows where he is. Perhaps I can... Beeler, I want to talk to you in the other room. Why, well, yeah, sure thing. Stay here with the baby, Jenny. But that mask... Now, man... don't worry. Beeler, when I came here tonight, I intended to have a showdown. I didn't expect to find a sick baby. Well... A showdown? That can wait till later now. But who are you? Why do you wear that mask? What do you mean by showdown? You're not the sort of man I expected to find. Well, what's that got to do with Wrap my Wrap your baby? son in the warmest blanket you have. Then hitch a team to your buckboard and take him into town. T to town? Yes, to Dr. Farnsworth's office. But he's not there. He's gone. He was in jail and he broke out. I, I know he was in jail. Your testimony helped put him there. Yeah. Your false testimony. What's that? You stood on that witness stand and lied. You lied about Dr. Farnsworth and his brother. But... If it hadn't been for what you swore to, Dr. Farnsworth would never have been accused of the murder of Sam Harper. But we'll get into that later on. You said I should take Billy to the doctor's office? Yes, and if no one's there, light the lamps and wait. Well, what if it's locked up? Break in. There'll be medicine there, the sort of medicine Billy needs. Before you leave, there'll be someone there to tell you how to use it. Now go and tell your wife to get your son ready. I'll see you later. Good gosh. Clay, I heard the door close. Is that man gone? Jenny, get some warm blankets. We're taking Billy to town. I'm going to do just as that masked man says. Jim Farnsworth and his brother, the doctor, had found a hideout they thought secure. At the bottom of an arroyo, they were screened on all sides by dense underbrush. The sound of approaching footsteps brought both brothers to sudden alertness. Jim, get your gun ready. I got it right in my hand. Might be someone just passing no. by. No. He's coming toward us. Straight toward us. Hold your fire, doctor. I'm not here to make trouble. You hear that? I've known where you were since last night. Well, stop right there and tell us who you are. I'm not the law. I'm wearing a mask. There he is, Doc. You'd better freeze. Either of you would shoot a man. Well, we wouldn't, huh? The law doesn't agree with that. Well, what do you want? How'd you know where we were? You two rode within five yards of Tonto and me. We camped in the same arroyo about a quarter of a mile to the east. Why, well, you're a mask. Yes. What do you want? Dr. Farnsworth, you're needed. Badly needed. I am, huh? I sent a sick baby to your office. There's no other doctor. Isn't that too bad? Why didn't someone think of that before they railroaded me into prison? I hope everyone in that confounded town gets sick. They're a pack of ignorant fools. Doctor, it's a baby who's sick. What of it? I hope it's a youngster, one of those jurymen who listened to the lies Clay Beeler told and believed them. No, doctor. It's not the child of a juryman. Well? It's the son of Clay Beeler himself. What? Clay Beeler, son. <laughs> Justice. You hear it, Jim? Justice. <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
continue our story. Dr. Farnsworth was highly amused at what he termed justice when the Lone Ranger told him the son of Clay Beeler was in need of medical attention. That's the best I've ever heard. The Beeler kid may die because there's no doctor in town. I'm the doctor. I'm hiding out a hunted man, a condemned man. And why? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because Clay Beeler swore to a pack of lies. All right, Dr. Farnsworth. You've had your laugh. Let's forget I came here. What's that? I said forget I came here. I I thought you could help that little boy. But you can't. You're doggone right I can't. I show up in town, the law will grab me. Both of us. The life of a little boy is nothing compared to your freedom. Well, uh, my freedom means a lot to me. Yes, I understand. Jim and I aren't killers. We had no more to do with the murder of old Sam Harper than, than Clay Beeler's baby boy. There was a lot that was never brought out at your trial. You two had been supporting Harper, giving him money. But that was made to appear as if you'd been paying him blackmail. How do you know about that? Because I investigated the situation. But never mind. Let's forget the whole thing. Forget the little boy and your oath. My oath? You and Jim had better get as far from here as you can. Kendall is determined to see you two found and brought back. Kendall is? He keeps after the sheriff. Uh, what's it to Jay Kendall if we get away? Don't you see? As long as you two stay away, everyone will be satisfied that the killers of Sam Harper were justly convicted... You went back and fought for justice. The real killer might be found. And Jay Kendall doesn't want that? Oh, no. I, I keep thinking uh, about that confounded youngster. Yes, he's a cute little fellow. I brought him into the world. And uh, you'll send him out of it. Well, I guess that's all right, isn't it, Doctor? I... Uh, maybe... A... Doc... If we go to town, the law will get us for sure. I know that. We'll go to jail for the rest of our lives. Yeah. If we don't go back, we can escape. We can stay in the clear. And Clay Beeler will lose his child. That's justice, isn't it, Doctor? As you said, it's poetic justice. A kid didn't do anything wrong. I... Jim, I can't do it. Can't go back? Not that. I can't let a baby die. I've got to do what I can for him. I can't go through the rest of my life thinking about that, that chubby little fella. Knowing I'm free because I let him die. I thought you'd understand. I told Beeler to wait for you at your office. It was the middle of the night when Tonto rode into town and went directly to the home of the sheriff. Without hesitation, he entered the house and went to a bedroom where the sheriff slept. He lighted the lamp, then laid hands on the lawman's shoulders. Sheriff, you, get up. Sheriff, wake up. Get up, quick. Hey, what the... What's up? Where's my gun? Steady, Sheriff. Redskin. Uh-huh. Me, Tonto. What, what are you doing here? Who lighted that lamp? What's this mean? Me light lamp. Now you get up. My gun. Me you... got gun. Oh, huh. so I see. All right. What's the game? You get dressed. You come with Tonto. Tonto? That's your name, huh? That's right. Where are you taking me? We go office doctor. Where? You look out window. Look down street. You see lights in doctor's office. Uh, let me see. Ah. Uh, you see? Hmm. You're right. What's that light mean? Plumber there, named Beeler. Clay Beeler? Ah, uh, by and by, doctor come there. Farnsworth? That's right. Just what sort of a trick is this? You come. You, you can't see. make me believe that Doc Farnsworth would go right into his office with lights blazing like they are when every lawman in town is on the hunt for him. Well, you get dressed. We go there. Yeah, you're doggone right we'll go there. Clay Beeler and his wife had followed the Lone Ranger's instructions and had gone directly to the office that Bart Farnsworth had abandoned. Jenny held the softly crying little boy while Beeler paced the floor nervously. I don't know whether we've done the right thing or not. 
sure wish I could decide. Clay, we had to do something. How's Billy now? Just the same. Wish I knew something about the doc's medicines. Boy. Lots of stuff here in the cupboard if I only knew no, what... No, no, Clay. Don't touch any of it. We don't know anything about it. Yeah, that's right. Maybe we did a local thing in coming here, but there's something about that masked man that made me feel we could trust him. Clay, someone's I... coming. Sure enough. Beaver. Why, it's the sheriff. And an Indian. What are you doing here, Beaver? Well, I... We... Uh, we me did... take a look at little fella. Yeah. Well, I... Uh, me tell take a look at You keep away from Billy. Uh-huh. You say so, me do it. Farnsworth here? No, but I wish to goodness he was, Sheriff. Our boy is awful sick. Fever? Yes. Did you come here expecting to find Doc Farnsworth? Yes. You see, there was a masked man. A masked he... man? Yes. No, Tom. Just like the Farnsworth brothers. Well, I don't know, but he told me to come here. Said the doctor'd be here to see my boy. Well, you've got a pile of nerve expecting the doctor to come and take care of your son after what you said about him in court. Yes, I know. Farnsworth comes here... He'll go back to jail. And there's no one knows it any better than he oh, does. Oh, sir. Yeah, that masked man. Oh, he's come. Clay, look out the window. See if the doctor's with him. All right. Get back, Tonto. You're covered. Oh, you not need gun. I'll be the judge of that. I won't be taken in by no tricks. Jenny, he's here. The doctor? Yes, both he and his brother. Don't either of you want him that I'm here. But, Sheriff, he came to help our baby. I know. Made yourself right at home, huh, Baylor? Doc, I don't know Get him up, the... Doc. You too, Jim. Right on the job, huh, Sheriff? There's the masked man. Have you been here long? What's it to you? Get him up. You along with the others. Put the gun down, Sheriff. You won't need it. These men are not armed. Don't try no tricks. I've got all of you covered. Let me see that little boy. Oh, Doctor, he's feverish. I, I'm afraid for him. You can see what ails him, Doc. But from here, you go to jail. Remember that. Yes, I'll remember it. As for you, mister, I'll have your guns. Then we'll see what's back of that mask. Let's wait until the doctor's finished. Then we'll discuss that, Sheriff. Well... Isn't he all uh, feverish, Doctor? Well... Is, is he going to die? Fever. I have to take good care of him. You better keep him here in town for a day or so. And we can keep a close watch on him. I have some medicine here that'll fix him up. He, he'll get well? Of course he'll get well. Oh... I'll give him a dose of medicine right now and tell you how to take care of him. This is the best thing there is for little fellows like Billy. He doesn't behave like a murderer, does he, Sheriff? That's not for me to judge. I don't think a murderer would have given up his freedom to take care of a sick baby. Do you? Mm, a doc's no killer, neither am I. Take it easy, Jim. Remember, I'm holding a gun on you. I'm not likely to forget it. There's something doggone queer about this. It's downright unnatural for a killer to come back and face capture, knowing he'll go to jail for life. There are two reasons for it, Sheriff. Yeah? These men are not killers. That's the first reason. The second reason is that Bart Farnsworth is a doctor. He swore under oath to do all he could to heal and comfort the sick and wounded to preserve life. Hmm. It takes a big man to think so much of a sworn oath. What are you thinking of, Beeler? Well, I was... What do you mean? You're going to keep your son. He'll grow up and will probably think his father is a great man. Most boys do. Oh, stop. You can tell him how the doctor who is serving a life term in prison gave up his freedom to cure him of the fever. He's going to get well, Jenny. You oh, hear that, Beeler? Yeah. The strange sort of justice that can put the doctor in jail while the murderer of Sam Harper stays free, isn't it? Well, what do you mean? The sheriff is here. It would be a good time for you to tell the truth. Clay, what does he mean? I don't... He means that I stood on the witness stand and swore lies that sent the doc to jail. That's what he means. I, I can't keep quiet any longer. I won't. Kendall can do what he wants. Kendall? The banker. What about Kendall? What about him? I'll tell you what about him. He killed Sam Harper. What, what Sam? Yes, that's right. He always hated Sam. Sam knew how he got the cash to start him out as a banker. Sam knew him in the East. Sam knew his real name, that he was wanted for murder in St. Louis. Well, uh, That's why Kendall wanted Sam killed. That's why he tried to hire me to kill him. Clay, Oh, Jenny, you... you may as well hear it along with the rest. When I worked in Kendall's bank, I knew how Doc and Jim drew out cash each month to help old Sam Harper. Kendall tried to make out that it was hush money they were paying, but that wasn't so. Doc's always helped people, lots of them. And he helped old Sam. Hmm. And why did you get on the stand and say you saw Doc and Jim riding away from Sam's place right after the murder? Now, I'll tell you, Sheriff. I'll tell you everything. I... 
I stole some money. Mm. Kendall caught me at it. Could have sent me to jail. Told me I could go to jail or I could keep the money and have enough more to pay off the mortgage on my ranch. I'd do what he wanted. Kill Sam Harper? Yes. But I wouldn't do that. Well, I couldn't do that, not even to stay out of jail. Then what? Well, I... I quit the bank, expecting to be arrested any day. But Kendall didn't make a move. And then he came to me. And he told me that he'd killed Sam Harper himself. And he told me that I had to go to court, tell a story to put the blame on Doc and Jim. You must have known we'd been there that night. He did, Doc. And he knew you couldn't furnish an alibi. Made me ride to Sam Harper's place just so as my horse's hoof prints would be there to back my story. Oh, Clay. I know it, Jenny. I've been a thieving, lying, no account polecat. And I hated myself. I hated myself for it, and. Well, I'm glad I've told the truth. Sheriff, I'm ready to make amends. I'll do whatever you say. Hmm. Clay, you've been an accessory after the fact. But in view of the confession you just made, there's a pretty fair chance that you'll get off with a few years in jail. Especially if you help the law convict Jay Kendall. Well, you can count on that. Maybe you'll be out and square with the world by the time the boy's old enough to start to school. Doc, I... I'm sorry about things. It's all right, Peter. If that mask man hadn't brought you back, I... I might have lost Billy. Yeah. And Jim and I might have stayed outlaws for the rest of our lives. Sheriff, isn't it about time to arrest Jay Kendall? He sure is. Come on, Toto. Uh Uh, I'll take that Indian with me. I'd like to see Kendall's face when he's aroused from sleep the way I was. Toto's going with me. Uh, Well... (laughs) After all, I reckon I better do some part of this thing without help. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 